You've all been very kind in letting me know that you've enjoyed the previous video that I made on the Tree of Life, a general introduction that I made a couple of weeks ago. And a few of you have asked for a further video on the paths of the Tree of Life. Now that's a significantly harder video to make because there's very little consensus. Um, there are two major streams, one being the Lurianic Tree of Life and then the other being the Hermetic Tree of Life. Um, and in fact, let me just uh, say that there will never be a better introduction for the absolute beginner to Kabbalah and the Tree of Life as this one written by Lon Milo Duquette. It's written with so much humor and uh, and so much insight. Uh, it's, it's absolutely wonderful. I will link that down in the description. First of all, uh, let me start off by very, very quickly talking about the Hebrew alphabet, because that is what the paths are based on. All of this is philosophy that is extracted from the book called uh, Sefer Yetzirah. Uh, the Hebrew alphabet is um, uh, divided into 22 letters. Uh, there are three letters that are very special, the mother letters, uh, that would be the Aleph, uh, the Mem, and the Shin. And then you've got the double letters uh, uh, in blue over here. And these are letters which historically had uh, two pronunciations, a, a soft pronunciation and a hard pronunciation. Uh, and then you've got 12 remaining single letters. Uh, over here. All of the paths on both uh, the uh, Lurianic and the Hermetic Tree of Life, they're all associated to uh, a letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Okay, so let me show you where the, uh, the paths are on this Lurianic version. Basically, we've got three mother letters here. Yeah, the Aleph, the Mem, and the shin. And in blue we've got the, um, the double letters over here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And over here we've got the single letters which go, and there are twelve of those. One, two, three, four, five, all right, so it's all the diagonal ones. You'll notice that I'm, I'm doing them in a weird order. That's because that's the order that the letters of the Hebrew al alphabet uh, appear uh, like this, and like this, and like this, and there, there. Okay, so there are the different paths on the Lurianic um, Tree of Life. I, I find this particular Tree of Life to be uh, particularly attractive, um, and that's because I really like the idea of having to go through Yesod to get to um, uh, anything above. Um, the Lurianic Tree of Life suggests that in fact, all creation comes from Kether and uh, in fact passes through Yesod to get to Malkut, the bottom um, um, material realm. Um, Malkut down here and Yesod. Okay, I also really like the fact that the, um, uh, the path which even the Hermeticists show as a typical path from Kether to Malkut or from Malkut to Kether goes something like this. There you go. It looks a little bit like a like um, a, a lightning bolt. In fact, some some people call it the lightning path. And there are paths that uh, that 
that fit that all the way. Whereas in the Hermetic tradition, it's slightly different. First of all, there is over here a path between Ketha and Hokma, and there's also the same going from Ketha to Bina and from Ketha to Tipperet. Let me just uh, number these. If these are the numbers 1 to 10, with 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 down here. Then we've got 11 over here, and 12, and 13. And uh, it's, it's actually quite logical most of the way. Logic does break down a, a little way down. I'll show you that in a, in a moment. We've got 14 over here. So basically, you start off with Ketha and you link it to everywhere that Ketha has links to. You remember from last video that Tiferet has links to everything except for Malkut. Um, okay, so Ketha is linked to Hokma, to Bina, and to Tiferet. Then you go to the next uh, sephira, the, the next sphere, and Hokma is linked to Bina. It's linked to Hesed. And it's linked to Tiferet. Yes, that would be 15. And 16. So that's that's everything that uh, that Hokma is linked to. In the Hermetic Tree of Life, Hokma is not linked to Gebura the way it is in the Lurianic one. Right. Uh, so then you go to Bina and you link it to its closest relative, which is number five. Obviously, five is closer to three than six is. Um, so that would be number 17 over here, and then 18 down here. Then you go to number, yeah, after 3 is 4. Uh, number 4 is, first of all, it's linked to Gebrura, so that would be uh, number 19. Hesed is then linked to number six, uh, Tiferet, 20, and 21. Then after that is linked to everything that it could be linked to, then you go to the next one, five, and that's linked to Tiferet, so that would be path number 22, and then path number 23. And then, so, yeah, Gebura is now also linked to everything that it could be linked to. So after five is six. Six gets linked to Netzach. 24. And this is where the logic breaks down just for one, uh, for one path. Instead of going 24, 25, 26, it goes 24, 25. 26. Why? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, just, uh, I just don't know. So then number seven, of course, is first of all linked to the one across the way, all the way over there, Hod. Okay, so that would be 26. And then it's linked to Yesod, 27. And then it's linked also to Malkut in the um, Hermetic Tree of Life. All the way down here, that's 28. Okay, and in the same way, Hod is linked to Yesod, 29. Hmm, have I missed one? I've made a mistake, so... Uh, 27, what a mess. <laughs> I'm very sorry. Okay, 30. Next, we've got 31. 31. And the last one between Yesod and Malkut. 
32. So you'll notice that the main difference here is that instead of having paths from Bina, I can just write those in, Bina, instead of having from Bina to Chesed and from Chokmah to Gebura, um, so these these diagonals do not exist here. Yeah, and instead we've got paths from Netzach to Malkut and Hod to Malkut, which do not exist here. Yeah. All right. Now the big difference over here is that the Hebrew letters are attributed in order, not the mother letters first and then the double letters and then the single letters but literally from Aleph uh, I can't draw an Aleph I'll write it <laughs> Aleph all the way down to Tau which is this one Tau or Tav mm -hmm. so now that you've got an idea of where the paths are or well, whichever version you prefer. Um, what, in fact, is a path? A path is the step that is required to go from one sephirah to another sephirah. It's the necessary change. It's the necessary evolution. Uh, so, and that's, so that's all it is. You can think about it like a tunnel with its entrance having a lot to do with one sephira and its exit having a lot to do with the other sephira and something happens in the middle to make the change possible. If you're thinking about it in terms of psychology, it's the change in states of mind that's required for going from one to the other states of mind. What process is required for going from the sphere of mercy to the sphere of severity for instance or from the sphere of dream or imagination to the sphere of intellect okay if we're talking about the tarot well a lot of people like to place the major arcana on the uh, 22 different paths there are 22 major arcana 22 paths um I'll make a further video on uh, the tarot and the tree of life. I think this could possibly be the next one in the series. So each path has got a letter attributed to it and each of those letters means something. So the Hebrew alphabet, I, I don't know if you've maybe heard of the idea of Sanskrit. Now I know I'm taking you away a little bit now from, uh, from the Western tradition. Sanskrit is said to be the most complex grammar in the world. Uh, I don't know whether it is or not. Some people certainly claim that it is. And it is said that if you can understand Sanskrit, then you've understood the mind of God. Um, in the same way, Hebrew is supposed to represent the mind of God. And each letter is supposed to represent an aspect of reality. And this is the point at which I'd like to address the question, which one is right? Uh, you know which one I prefer, but which one is right? Here are my thoughts about it. I can absolutely see how this is going to speak to a, a, a particular tradition, a particular mindset, whereas this one is going to speak to another group of people entirely. Um, and m maybe, just maybe, both can be useful in different situations. Now, there's a fantastic writer. Uh, the author's name is David Haim Smith, who is putting the final touches on his book, The 32 Keys, in which he is going to be putting together these two traditions with a third tradition called the Iyun tradition. And um, instead of having a view of the Tree of Life or of Kabbalah, where um, reality is emanated from 
Ketha down to Malkut. Um, he calls his uh, his practice, his way of working with the Tree of Life, a non-emanationist Kabbalah. I think that's a very attractive idea, and uh, I'm really looking forward to his book. I will also link the book's uh, page where you can uh, pick that up. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up and to subscribe down below if you haven't already. Thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.